to minus 10, 9, 8. The thunderous roar of 33 Raptor engines is about to shake Starbase once again as SpaceX's revolutionary Starship prepares for its eighth flight on March 3rd. After weeks of delays, the world's most powerful rocket stands tall on the launch pad, ready to push the boundaries of space exploration even further. This isn't just another test flight. Flight 8 represents a critical evolution in Starship's development. SpaceX engineers have implemented significant changes to the flight plan, refined critical systems, and optimized performance based on valuable data from previous launches. Remember that crater created during Flight 1? The concrete launch pad was obliterated when those 33 Raptor engines ignited without proper protection. Today, SpaceX's revolutionary water deluge system will release 350,000 gallons of water during ignition, taming the raw power of engines capable of generating over 7,000 tons of thrust. One of the mission's key objectives is to successfully complete the payload deployment test that wasn't fully achieved during Flight 7. When fully operational, Starship will carry up to 150 metric tons to orbit in reusable configuration, far exceeding the 140-ton capacity of NASA's Saturn V that took astronauts to the moon. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours, where we bring you the latest developments in the journey to make humanity multiplanetary. Let's dive right in. The Long Road to Launch Day The journey to Flight 8 hasn't been smooth sailing. Originally scheduled weeks earlier, this mission faced multiple delays as SpaceX engineers meticulously refined systems and awaited regulatory approvals. But unlike traditional aerospace companies that might view delays as setbacks, SpaceX transforms waiting time into opportunity. Every day we're not flying is another day we're improving, a SpaceX engineer once remarked. This philosophy has defined the Starship program since its inception with each delay serving as precious time to enhance reliability and performance. Behind the scenes at Starbase, teams have been working around the clock. Engineers in hard hats climb the 400-foot rocket stack daily, inspecting welds, testing valves, and verifying connections. Software developers continuously optimize flight code, running thousands of simulations to predict how Starship will respond to different atmospheric conditions. Meanwhile, Raptor engine technicians fine-tune the world's most advanced methane oxygen engines, ensuring each of the 33 boosters will perform flawlessly during the critical moments after ignition. The pre-launch sequence, a choreographed ballet. The preparation for launch follows a precisely orchestrated timeline that began weeks ago. First came the dramatic stacking operation in late February, a delicate dance of massive machinery as the Super Heavy Booster and Starship upper stage were joined together to form the tallest rocket ever assembled. Once stacked, engineers conducted cryogenic proof testing, subjecting the vehicle to temperatures below minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit to verify its ability to withstand the extreme cold of liquid oxygen and methane. The stainless steel structure contracts and expands during these tests, creating ghostly clouds of condensation that roll off the rocket's skin. A visual reminder of the harsh conditions Starship must endure. The static fire test followed, briefly igniting engines to verify their performance. When all 33 Raptor engines fire simultaneously during these tests, the ground at Starbase literally shakes and the roar can be heard miles away across Boca Chica Bay. With vehicle testing complete, SpaceX conducted the flight readiness review a rigorous examination where engineers from every department present data confirming their systems are go for launch. Only after unanimous approval does the countdown truly begin. T-minus, the final countdown. On launch day, March 3rd, the real action begins long before SpaceX activates their live stream. Road closures around Starbase start at 11 a.m., creating a safety perimeter as teams begin their final preparations. By the time the webcast begins approximately 40 minutes before liftoff, the massive launch tower, nicknamed Mechazilla, stands ready with its robotic arms poised to support the rocket until the final moments. The fueling process is a marvel of engineering in itself. At T-1 hour and 15 minutes, the flight director gives the go-ahead to begin loading propellants. The sequence follows a carefully calculated order. Starship's liquid oxygen first, then liquid methane, followed by the booster's methane, and finally the booster's oxygen. 
This isn't your ordinary gas station fill-up. Over 4,500 tons of cryogenic liquids flow through pipes wider than a person's torso, filling massive tanks in just 43 minutes. To put this in perspective, the amount of energy stored in Starship's fully-fueled tanks equals roughly 174,747 jumbo jets flying at full throttle. As propellants flow into the vehicle, dramatic clouds billow around the launch site, not smoke, but water vapor condensing in the ultra-cold air surrounding the rocket. These vapors create an almost mystical atmosphere around the launch pad, with Starship emerging from the mist like a vessel from another world. The critical engine chill. Perhaps the most crucial pre-launch procedure begins at T minus 19 minutes and 40 seconds, the engine chill. This process gradually lowers the temperature of the Raptor engines before they contact the minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit propellants. Without this step, the sudden thermal shock could crack vital components or cause uneven expansion, potentially leading to catastrophic failure. During engine chill, liquid oxygen flows through special pathways in each engine, creating a distinctive puffing effect as excess oxygen vaporizes and vents away. These rhythmic pulses of white vapor at the base of the rocket are a telltale sign that launch is imminent. The water deluge, taming the dragon. At T minus 10 seconds, one of SpaceX's most impressive engineering achievements activates the water deluge system. This massive flood suppression system releases approximately 350,000 gallons of water in seconds, enough to fill half an Olympic swimming pool creating a protective barrier between the launch mount and the raw power of the Raptor engines. The importance of this system cannot be overstated. During Starship's first flight test, without water deluge protection, the tremendous force from ignition pulverized the concrete pad below, creating a debris storm that damaged ground equipment and carved a substantial crater. Concrete chunks became dangerous projectiles, flying hundreds of meters in all directions. SpaceX's solution was both elegant and effective. By flooding the pad with high-pressure water, they created a sacrificial medium that absorbs heat, dampens acoustic vibrations, and prevents the shock wave from reflecting off the ground and back onto the rocket. Since implementing this system, pad damage has been virtually eliminated despite the enormous energy released by 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. The moment of truth liftoff. When all 33 engines ignite, they generate over 7,000 tons of thrust, more than twice the force of NASA's Saturn V moon rocket. The ignition sequence itself is a technological marvel, with engines starting from the center outward in a carefully timed pattern to prevent destructive harmonic vibrations from building up in the structure. As Starship lifts off, it will accelerate slowly at first, a seemingly contradictory experience given the raw power being unleashed. The rocket is so massive that despite having thrust equivalent to 150 jumbo jets, it takes several seconds to clear the launch tower. But once airborne, acceleration builds rapidly. The flight plan, a symphony of precision. The first major milestone comes at T plus one minute and two seconds when Starship reaches max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. At this moment, the vehicle experiences the greatest structural stress as it punches through the densest part of the atmosphere at increasing speed. The distinctive rippling effect sometimes visible on the rocket's skin during this phase isn't a cause for concern. It's actually the stainless steel hull flexing slightly as designed to absorb these forces. The next critical phase begins at T plus two minutes and 32 seconds as Starship prepares for stage separation. This is where Flight 8 introduces one of its most significant innovations, the hot staging technique. Unlike traditional rockets that shut down all booster engines before separation, Starship will maintain thrust from three central engines while simultaneously igniting the upper stage engines at T plus two minutes and 40 seconds, while still attached to the booster. This hot staging approach, rarely used in modern rockets, offers substantial performance benefits. By maintaining thrust during separation, Starship eliminates the deceleration that typically occurs between booster cutoff and second stage ignition. The result is a more efficient use of propellant and increased payload capacity, 
Just five seconds later, at T plus two minutes and 45 seconds, the super heavy booster begins its boost back burn. 10 engines from the middle ring will reignite, applying thrust to redirect the massive booster toward its landing zone. This controlled return represents one of the most complex aspects of SpaceX's reusability vision, recovering a first stage that stands taller than the Statue of Liberty. As the booster makes its journey back, the upper stage Starship continues accelerating to orbital velocity. At T plus eight minutes and 44 seconds, it reaches its target altitude and velocity, shutting down its engines and entering a brief coast phase before the mission's next objective. The payload deployment test and orbital milestone. A key objective for Flight 8 comes at T plus 17 minutes and 24 seconds, the payload deployment test. This critical demonstration was attempted during Flight 7, but encountered technical issues that prevented the successful deployment of all 10 test payloads. SpaceX engineers have redesigned the deployment mechanism for Flight 8, implementing lessons learned from the previous flight. The new system features a more robust actuation mechanism and improved control software, designed to ensure smooth, sequential release of the test articles. While these test payloads are relatively small compared to Starship's ultimate capacity, they represent a crucial validation of systems that will eventually deploy everything from commercial satellites to vital infrastructure for lunar and Martian missions. When fully operational, Starship will transform our approach to space deployment, offering unprecedented capacity both in volume and mass. To comprehend Starship's revolutionary potential, consider its maximum payload capacity, up to 150 metric tons to low Earth orbit in fully reusable configuration, or an astonishing 250 metric tons when operated expendably. For comparison, the Saturn V, history's previous heavyweight champion, and the rocket that took humans to the moon, could deliver 140 metric tons to orbit, but with no reusable components. Today's most powerful operational rocket before Starship, NASA's Space Launch System, tops out at 95 metric tons in its current configuration and may eventually reach 130 tons in future versions. Meanwhile, SpaceX's workhorse, Falcon Heavy, previously the most powerful active rocket, manages 63.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit. These figures aren't just about bragging rights. The economics of Starship fundamentally change what's possible in space. Current launch costs average $10,000 to $20,000 per kilogram to orbit. SpaceX aims to eventually reduce this to under $100 per kilogram with Starship, a 100-fold improvement that would revolutionize access to space much like how the Transcontinental Railroad transformed America's westward expansion. With such capabilities, Starship becomes more than just a rocket. It's a multi-purpose spacecraft designed to reshape humanity's relationship with space. Beyond deploying satellites, it will support space stations, refuel other spacecraft in orbit, deliver cargo to the lunar surface, and ultimately carry humans to establish the first settlements on Mars. The success of Flight 8's payload deployment test represents a crucial step toward validating these capabilities, proving that Starship can not only reach orbit, but also reliably deliver its precious cargo, whether that's satellites, supplies, or someday, the first humans to set foot on the Red Planet. As Starship prepares to soar once again, we're witnessing more than just another test flight. We're watching history unfold in real time. Each launch brings us closer to a future where interplanetary travel becomes routine, where the boundaries between Earth and the cosmos begin to blur. Flight 8 represents another critical step in SpaceX's methodical march toward Mars. With each successful milestone, from hot staging to payload deployment to controlled landings, the engineering challenges of deep space exploration are being solved one by one, right before our eyes. When Elon Musk first announced his vision for Starship, many dismissed it as science fiction. Today, as we watch this massive rocket preparing for its eighth flight, that fiction is transforming into reality. The question is no longer if humans will reach Mars, but when. If you're as fascinated by this journey as we are, make sure you're part of our community here at Elon Musk 24 Hours. Hit that subscribe button to join us for every milestone, every setback, and every triumph along the way. Drop a comment below with your predictions for Flight 8. Will we see a successful booster landing this time? Will all the payload deployments work as planned? 
Give this video a like if you found our breakdown helpful and share it with anyone who needs to understand why Starship matters. This isn't just SpaceX's journey, it's humanity's next great adventure. And we're covering every moment of it right here on Elon Musk 24 Hours. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you for the next giant leap forward.